amazing new time zone and reality, everyone. My name is Vel here at Science Way. Now that you've seen my mess of a room, I need to come up with a plan for what to remove, change, and add. I could just point at my walls and storage and talk about what to do, but that doesn't help you or my family see my space how I envision it. Plus, my thoughts put down somewhere could help me get a more accurate picture of what the space could look like and maybe see something I want to change from my original plan. How do I put my vision into a visual form, though? My drawing skills are subpar and 3D modeling or voxel modeling would be a bit more effort than I want to put into a plan I'll use maybe three times. And how would either of those art forms help with comparing sizes of storage, tables, and other things to make sure I don't buy something too big or too small? A while back, I found a browser program called Homestyler. It lets you create digital floor plans with real world measurements and different selections of furniture for whatever room you have in mind. They didn't sponsor me, by the way. I just really like the program. So first, I need to take measurements of my room. I took measurements of the main space, the door, the window, and the closet. I also took measurements of my table so I could get a feel for how big or small storage could be. Next, I took my measurements and plugged them in one by one each time I made a wall. Creating the little 10 degree wall was fun to figure out. Thanks room for not being a complete square. As far as I can figure out, you can only do whole numbers for everything. Some walls were a couple of feet and a couple of inches and a half long, but it just rounds it up even if you try to use decimals. For some things, it's probably best to go on the smaller side, and for others, it's probably best to use the bigger size. It's up to you though. I generally put walls on the smaller size. This was usually half an inch or one inch smaller. I did this so I wouldn't end up getting something too big. This way, I would plan for things in a smaller space, and when I got the pieces, I would have a few inches to spare. Once I had the floor plan created, I could start looking for furniture in their digital catalog. They have a lot of different categories and brands to choose from. While some stuff would be super expensive in real life, and they didn't have the stuff I was looking at, I tried to find things that were similar to what I had in mind to give me a rough idea of the whole space. This whole process is just to give me a clearer visual on what my room could look like with different things arranged in all kinds of ways. You can favorite items and put them in categories, which helps when they have tons of items. After I was done window shopping, also known as getting sidetracked, I put a few pieces in the floor plan. The great thing is you don't have to worry about the size of the furniture. You can resize everything to fit your needs. Sure, some of the textures or objects may look stretched or compacted, but this is just a basic idea of what I want to turn my makerspace into. So nothing has to be perfect visually, it just needs to be close enough in measurements. And there we go. This is what the plan for the makerspace looks like. The goal is to have a minimum of two tables, two small and large rolling storage bins, or one of each, a shelf system to hold filaments, and a small table, or ideally, a rolling tool chest for the 3D printer to sit on and hold my tools. Not all of the colors and system types are correct, but this just helps with figuring out the layout of my makerspace. I hope you enjoyed the process behind my makerspace plan. Next episode, we should be putting something together. I did make a mistake though, and we had to change the plan a little bit. You'll have to wait till next time to find out what it is though. Thanks for watching.